Good afternoon. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome you to our Wesley Methodist Church Jawabaru online service. Today is the third Saturday of Epiphany, and also we are celebrating Flash Saturday today. Due to MCO, we are suspending, to, uh, today is the second week that we are suspending our in-person service. And, now, and you can expect another two weeks at least when we suspend our in-person service. Okay. So there are, we are only limited to five people in the church. <clears throat> uh, number two. How do you respond when you or someone close to you are tested positive. There are a few things that you need to be aware. One is do not, be, do not panic. Second, you need to seek medical advice. And then third, you need to do a self-quarantine. And fourth, you need to either inform pastor or some of our church leaders, and we will help you when you, have this, when you are in this situation. The rest of the things that you need to do, we are leave it to your reading. Today, as, as I announced just now, today is a pledge Saturday. The details of the pledge Saturday, I'll give you the announcement during the tithes and offering. And uh, for our LCC members, please take note, tomorrow is our local conference. It will be held at 10 o'clock. Please attend the local conference. Our bishop will be um, will, will be the uh, chairperson of the of the local conference tomorrow. And for the Chinese congregation, we are starting a Chinese membership class, baptism of Chinese uh, and membership class, starting on the February twenty first. For those who are interested to be baptized or to be confirmed. Please uh, contact our pastor. Prayer United will be held. Will be held on the 28th to 30th of January 2021. For those who are interested, please contact Sister Chen Lili for registration. And then item number seven: Little Lamb's Lamb. This is an Orang Asli hostel in Malacca. And uh, for those who are interested to sponsor the Orang Asli uh, children, uh, the details are there and the account number are there. Do uh, sponsor for those who want to sponsor the children, the Orang Asli children. We have a new uh, membership and evangelist Evangelism Chairman, that is Mr. Jeffrey Wong, who has taken over from Nancy Ang. And uh, so for those who are not in the announcement chat group, please register with Jeffrey Wong. His number is in the announcement. The online offering and tithing, uh, we have announced that quite a number of times, so I guess you all are aware of how to do the online offering. Number 10, the one-year Bible. Uh, quite a number of, people, of our church members have already joined this one-year Bible. And for those who have not joined, I want to encourage you that it is not too late for you to join. You don't have to join on the 1st of January. Uh, for those who are not interested to read, there's a, a, an audio version. You can also listen. And uh, sometimes it is good also to listen and read at the same time. And you do not have to do it daily if you can't do it daily. The idea is for you to read the Bible as often as possible. So if you need more details, you can either contact Julian or Jun Hong. And the calendar, I leave it to your reading. Uh, just take note, nah, local conference is tomorrow. 
and then the prayer united is on the 28th to 30th of January. Okay, let's stand together for the call to worship. Let's stand. Huh? Find rest in God alone, for our hope comes from Him. Trust in God and all your hearts to Him, for He is our refuge. Our opening hymn, O oh God, our help is ages past. God, we marvel anew at the depth of your care and love for us and the many ways our lives have been guided by your mighty hand. Our hearts are full of thanksgiving to you. O Lord our God, help us to praise you today and forever. May your name be exalted above all the earth. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us prepare our hearts to worship God. In the book of Job, it is written, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end He will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. Friends, do we yearn for our Redeemer? Do we yearn for our Saviour? Do we yearn for our friend? No. 
Jesus died my soul to save my lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain washed it white as snow you are the salt of the earth but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Darkness is rife, making the sorrowing glad. Make me a blessing, make me a blessing out of my life. May Jesus shine.
be seated. It's time for our prayer and intercession. And today we have two major items. First one is the we want to pray for the national education in Malaysia. With the beginning of the new term on Tuesday, 20th January, we want to pray for the Ministry of Education, the students, teachers, and parents that the education policies and directives made during this challenging time will be well formulated, taking into consideration the needs of the teachers and the students. Also pray for the teachers and students that they will be able to adapt to another year of learning online in, in terms of teaching and learning. That alternate plans will be formulated for the needy students and those who do not have access to the learning facilities. We also want to pray especially for those who are students who are taking exams this year, especially those who are badly hit by the flood recently. That that, that they have sufficient time and resources to pray to prepare for the coming exams. We also pray for the effective SOP measures to be taken by the management of schools, kindergarten and the universities so that the pandemic outbreak will not happen among the students and teachers when they return to school. That God's peace will abide in the hearts of teachers and students and their parents as, they require, as some of them are required to resume in classes in school. We also pray especially for our church kindergarten, that, that our kindergarten will be a safe ground for the kids when they come back to, to the kindergarten, and that it will be a, a time for them to learn in our, in our, in our, in our kindergarten. That, and also the new kids will be able to adapt to this new learning environment. And the sec second item we want to pray for is our local church and ourselves. We pray that we will always remain calm and adaptable despite the many changing situations that are taking place in Johor Bahru and in our country. Pray that we will take this opportunity and to be disciples of Jesus Christ and spend more time in communion with God through the reading of his word, and prayers, and worship. We also pray that God will direct us in the path to be a disciple-making church. You know, that we will be diligent in reaching out to people who do not know Christ. And that we will be ministering to those who are needy. And, and that our church will be a blessing to all of them especially those who are needy during this challenging time. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for being our God and our Lord of our lives. We thank you for yet another day we can come together pray to you. Dear God, we pray especially for our nation, for our national education in Malaysia. With the beginning of the new school term that starts on the 20th of January, we come together to pray for the education ministry, the officials, the students, teachers and parents. Lord, we pray that the education policies and directives made during this challenging time will be well formulated and that the leaders will take into consideration the needs of our students and teachers in both the rural and urban areas, the kindergarten, schools, colleges and universities. Father, we pray that both the teachers and students will be taken care of and that they will be able to adapt to yet another year of online learning and teaching. Father, we pray that you will guide the leaders 
to ensure that alternate plans are being formulated for needy students, especially those in the rural areas who may not have access to online learning facilities, and their rights to education will not be neglected. For those who are taking exams this year, Father, we pray that those who are sitting for the exam this year, the start recently, we, Father, that we pray that the additional help will be given to them to prepare for their exams, that they will have sufficient time and resources to prepare for this coming exam. May you guide them, Lord, and may you comfort them. Thank you, Lord. We pray for the officials in the Ministry of Education, schools that, and schools that effective SOP measures will be taken to manage the schools, the kindergarten and the universities to prevent any pandemic outbreak among the students or teachers when they return to school or university. May your peace abide in the hearts of teachers, students and parents as some of them are required to resume classes in schools or universities. Dear God, we pray for our church kindergarten, residents in our kindergarten. If it is your will, Lord, we pray that you bring more students to enroll in our kindergarten in the months to come. We pray that our kindergarten will be a safe learning place for these kids and your shield of protection be upon the teachers, helpers, and the students. We pray especially for the new students in our kindergarten, that they will be able to adapt to this new learning environment. May you bless the management, the teachers, helpers, and students of our kindergarten. Gracious God, we come together praying for our local church, J.B. Wesley, and ourselves. We pray, Lord, that you will guide us to always remain calm and adaptable despite the many changing situations that are taking place around us, from MCO to CMCO, MCO, and now back to MCO. Lord, help us to cope and adapt to all these control movements. Thank you for your assurance and peace and comfort that we know that you are always with us in all these situations. Father, we pray that you will guide us to take this opportunity to learn how to be disciples of Jesus Christ and to be good witnesses for you, especially during this time. Thank you for reminding us to spend more time in communion with you and, and the reminder to spend more time reading and meditating your word, seeking you in prayer and having a heart of worship for you. Dear God, we pray that you will direct our path in disciple making, be diligent in reaching out and ministering to people around us, especially the needy. May you help and guide us in bringing God's love and blessings to them, that the church will continue to shine forth for you. Please help us to be good witnesses for you, even during this present challenging time. May the Lonia project be a blessing to the many needy students, needy ones around us who need help and comfort from us. May we be a blessing to all these people. Thank you, Lord, for listening to our prayers as we come together to pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Pass us as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. Please be seated. It's now, since there are only four of us here in the church, during this offertory time, let us, let us pray eh, together, you know, the offertory prayer together. Together, generous God, we ask you to bless the gift we give this day. Help us grow our faith and trust in you, that we might follow without book looking back and that we might leave behind more of our old life to experience more deeply new life in you. We surrender unto you those things that hold us from answering your call, that we might travel the road you have put us in the name of Christ who goes before us and besides us, we pray. Amen. Okay, today is um, Flash Saturday. So, so I want to make some announcements to you. In the past where we will have this um, paper that you fill up and then you put into the box for this. But because of this MCO, uh, we will not be doing that, but we will do the flash, e flash we call it. You know? And uh, so for the e flash, what you need to do is to tell you, is to send a WhatsApp message to Sister Yan Ling. The phone number is uh, given there. Uh, and uh, you give your name as in your NRIC, your and phone number, the amount that you want to pledge per year, you know, and the frequency, whether it is monthly, quarterly, or yearly that you want to. You know. And then you will send that information, these four lines. Huh? Your name, your phone number, the amount per year, and whether and the frequency, whether it is monthly, quarterly, or yearly. And send it to Sister Yan Ling. The phone number is there on the screen. I just want to read to you Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 to 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your buns with grain, and your buns will overflow with good wine. Proverbs chapter 3, verses, eight, verses 9 to 10. Let's stand for the doxology. Before the scripture is read, let us pray together the prayer for illumination. Together, gracious God, may your Holy Spirit give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation that with the eyes of our heart enlightened, we may know the hope to which Christ has called us, the riches of his glorious inheritance among us, that the greatness of his power for those who believe we pray in the name of Jesus, your Son. Amen. The scripture reading today is taken from Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 22. And I'm reading from the New International Version. Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 22. Verse 18. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, 
and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in the boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed Jesus. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. The sermon today is by our pastor, Reverend Wong Man Wah. Pastor is away for a local conference as he's a DS of Southern District. His sermon is, has been recorded and we will now stream the recording of his sermon. Come, follow me. Brothers and sisters, grace and peace of the Lord be with you and your loved ones. It is always good as we come together for a time of worship. And as we worship God, we surrender to God all our cares, our burdens, a time of pandemic. We do not need, uh, as much as the situation sometimes seems a bit uh, uh, depressive to some of us, we do not need to carry this heavy burden. We surrender to God and we continue to look upon Him for grace, for strength, for peace, and for His presence in our lives. So remember, brothers and sisters, always to be mindful, to stay safe, keep healthy, and continue to seek God in all our situation. Let us commit this time to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, even though we are not able to come together in church for in-person worship. We thank you that you continue to call us together at our respective home to praise you. And even as we commit this time of listening to your word unto you, we pray, Lord, may your spirit speak to us, speak to our hearts. We commit this time unto you. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts, be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Brothers and sisters, today is a pledge day for this year. This is a day we normally pledge our tithes unto God. And as we pledge, it's an act of trust and faith in God, trusting that God will surely provide all that we need. Even the very amount that we are going to, to put into the offering bank, even the very amount that we offer to God, we trust that ultimately God will provide. As we make of commitment, demonstrating our resolve to see God's will be done and His kingdom come. As we channel our offering and tithe through our church ministries, to help the poor and needy as we channel these resources blessing to the unrich. Our pledge today is an act of commitment to make Christ known. But we also need to remember that our offering, our giving, is only one aspect. Apart from this offering and giving, God desire of us to love and to, to devote ourselves to Him. God desire of us to commit ourselves to church ministry. God desire of our God desire of our prayers. All these are equally important, and therefore. When Jesus was asked, 
which is the first and the greatest commandment. Jesus replied in Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 to 38, and said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Basically, this commandment demonstrated to us what God desired of us. A total undivided devotion to God. A devotion that involves our whole being. Our minds, our heart, our souls and our strength. And this is what God desires of us. And therefore, on this pledge day, it's appropriate for us to be reminded of the meaning, what it means to pledge our to God, especially as we look at the scripture passage today, which is taken from Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 22. In this portion of scripture, we see Jesus himself make disciples as he began his public ministry. The earlier verse in verse 17 told us that Jesus began to preach kingdom's message from that time on. As he began, started his uh, public ministry, he preached God's kingdom's message. And as he preached kingdom's message, he called disciples. Uh, in verse, the following verse, in verse 18, saw him starting to invite people to be his disciples while he was walking on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Here presented to us two occasions. On the first occasion, Jesus met two brothers, and they are Simon Peter and brother Andrew. And both of them, as fishermen, were then casting a net into the lake. Jesus extended an invitation to both of them. Come, follow me, and I will make you fisher of men. And at once, the scripture say, verse 20, at once they left their net and followed Jesus. Then presented unto us another occasion, as Jesus moved on from there, also on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, that he saw two other brothers, also fishermen, and they are James and his brother John, who were then in a boat with their father, preparing, preparing their nets. And Jesus called them. And immediately, again, verse 22, they immediately they left the boat and their father and followed. As we take these two occasions side by side, we see that there are similarities found in these two occasions for Christian discipleship. There are five similarities from these two narratives. First of all, they encounter Jesus in the course of their daily lives. As four of them, on two separate occasions, busy with their fishing, busy with their preparation for netting, they encounter Jesus. And they heard, the second similarity is that they heard Jesus calling them, come, follow me. And the third similarity is that they responded positively and immediately. Not only that, They responded, they make decision. And the fourth similar, similarity is that they left, they put aside the very things that occupied them. Not only that they make decision, the decision is translated with action. And the fifth one is that they follow Jesus. You know, as I read this portion of scripture many years ago before I entered into full-time ministries, I used to read this narrative literally, thinking that all these 
four disciples of Jesus are our role model. Because the moment they are called, they responded there and then, without any hesitation, without any delay, they responded immediately at once. I used to think that anyone who did responding to our Lord's calling is not worthy of following Jesus. But later, after I entered into the ministry, I came across another gospel account of Jesus calling his first batch of disciples. That is, it. That is in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 35 to 42. Somehow my perception changed somewhat. I realized that God is always gracious to provide us a context, a context to know Jesus before leading us to take another important step of making decision of following Jesus. In this John account, we see that Peter's brother Andrew, he encountered Jesus. He encountered Jesus on the road and he heard of John the Baptist pointing Jesus, telling people that the Lamb of God. And as Andrew heard what John the Baptist said, probably out of his curiosity, he followed Jesus. And as Andrew followed Jesus, Andrew was given the privilege to spend time with Jesus that evening. And later, it was through Andrew's personal testimony that Peter came to know Jesus. Peter came to know Jesus' identity as Messiah. And it is through Andrew's leading that Peter subsequently met Jesus in person. So, and therefore, as I try to, to put these two portions of Scripture together, I, and as I try to harmonize it, probably, yeah, probably before Peter grew, responded to Jesus' calling or following him, probably they have already knew Jesus. Still, the general sequence of following Jesus is still the same. It all started from us encountering Jesus, and then knowing Jesus, making decisions, and leaving our old selves, and following Jesus. Next slide, please. This is a model of following Jesus. We encounter Jesus and then move on. We know Jesus and then move on. After knowing Jesus, we make a decision whether to follow Jesus or not. Then we leave our old selves, the things that occupy us. Then moving on from there, follow Jesus with doubt. We need to ask ourselves, where are we in life? Which stage that we are in at this present time of our life? Are we at a stage of encountering Jesus? Probably some of us maybe just, just come across someone have uh, uh, crossed our path and shared with us the gospel of Jesus Christ. Some of us may have heard of uh, Jesus, uh, uh, stories of Jesus' healing and deliverance. Some of us may have heard uh, personal, uh, some of our personal testimonies uh, uh, of how Jesus helped us and delivered us from our troubles, etc. And after we receive all these, after we hear all these stories and testimonies, deep in our hearts, we may be wondering, not sure whether these stories, are testimonies are trustworthy or not, and we are hesitating whether to... to, to to follow Jesus or not, to receive Jesus as our Lord or Saviour, and Saviour or not, here Jesus invites us 
Come, follow me. An invitation to know him deeper. Or perhaps some of us may have known Jesus. When I say we know uh, 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 knowing Jesus, of course, it is a lifelong undertaking. Knowing Jesus is a lifelong undertaking. But here, specifically, I'm referring to our early stage of trying to know Jesus prior to our decision of following Him. I have come across many people, especially elder generation, some uh, uh, elderly, that how they have known Jesus. Even during school days, uh, many elderly during their school days, they were sent to missionary school. They were from uh, brother schools or convent schools, and they have attended religious classes. And perhaps some of us, grown up in a church, attending a church school, Sunday school, and we have a lot of Bible knowledge, etc. Yet, despite of knowing Jesus, we have yet to make any decision of receiving or following Jesus. I have heard of stories of some people knowing Jesus, but as they reflect, as they see their lives as unworthy sinners, they hesitate to respond to Jesus' invitation. And therefore, still stuck, are still stuck where they are. I heard of many stories, and I come across people of many cases stuck in uh, with lots of cares and concern. And one of the one of the concern is our Chinese uh, filial piety to our ancestors, and therefore. As much as we know Jesus, we have not crossed this important path of making decision of receiving Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Today, through this passage, Jesus invites us, come, follow me. It's an invitation to make the decision of following Jesus. Remember, Jesus comes to this earth to save sinners. He comes to take away our heavy burden. He comes to treat our heavy burdens light and easy. Therefore, if we think that we are unworthy, we are a, an unworthy sinner, in the words of C.S. Lewis, Christ died for man precisely because men are not worthy dying for, to make them worthy. Yes, we are not worthy to be saved, but Christ come to save us, to make us worthy. So, as if we are in this kind of situation, this is an invitation from our Lord. To us. Come, follow him. Make this decision of receiving our Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior. Many a times we just need to trust. We just need to trust in trust that as we come to Lord, we just surrender all our cares and concern to the Lord. And trust that as we, as we receive him as our Lord and Savior, he will have a way, he will open way for us to address all our cares and concern. Some of us may have made a decision of following Jesus, but we are stuck in our old lives. We are still very much in the bondage of sin. 
we are still very much influenced by spiritual stronghold, going through the vicious cycle of habitual sins. Perhaps some of us are in this vicious cycle of sin, and then after sin, we have guilt, and then we plead to God for forgiveness, and as God forgives our sins, and then after some time, we go back uh, and pleading God for forgiveness again. So, for us who are in this, this vicious cycle, for, this, for those who are still stuck in our old selves, Jesus invites us, come, follow me. An invitation to be set free through his word, through his powerful word, and through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Yes, as we receive Jesus as our Lord and Saviour, we are no longer helpless. As we receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will empower us. The Holy Spirit will guide us. The Holy Spirit, and through God's Word, will continue to renew our hearts, our mind. And the Holy Spirit, through God's Word, will continue to transform us renew our hearts and minds, we have a new perspective of seeing the world. So, come, follow him. Respond to Jesus' calling to put aside the very old selves that occupy us. Many a times as Christians, we come across remarks such as, I'm like that. Uh, I'm like that is a word, is a word, is a description of our past. It cannot be used for our present. If we use it for our present, basically it's indicating that we are still very much our, our lives, we are still the Lord of our lives. We give no room for God to transform and change us. So this is something that we need to be careful. Or some of us may be at the stage of leaving our old selves and following Jesus. But along the way, we encounter disappointment, disappointment, disappointment. we encounter distractions in life. And after a while, we forget our first love. We lost in following Jesus. And not only that, we lost in our effort of following Jesus, we fall into the devil's scheme. We live in denial. We live in self-deception. And this is an illustration for those that who have many, some, some of our friends who have uh, uh, not to say of this pandemic, even before this pandemic, many have not returning to church. Many have lost their fellowship with one another. Many have not having intimate relationship with God. And for this group of people, today Jesus invites us once again, come, Follow me. Yes, you, we may have lost in following Jesus because of distraction, because of disappointment in life. Now it's an invitation of returning to, to him, returning, returning to Jesus, continue to follow Jesus. Some of us may be at this stage. Next slide. Some of us may be at this stage of following Jesus. Next slide. Yes, very good. For those who have been following Jesus, now Jesus invites us, come, follow me. An invitation to continue abiding in him, following and imitating him in disciple-making. We need to remember 
Just now, the scripture passage that revealed to us, in both occasions, Jesus is the one who initiated this entire disciple-making. Jesus not only initiated, he approached and he called. Likewise, as followers of Jesus, as his disciples, we need to imitate him. We need to be to call. We need to be co partner with Jesus in fulfilling his great commission, the very great commission that he has given us to go and make disciples of all nations. Is not an undertaking that he gives us to do on our own. No, he just wants us to be in partnership with him. And therefore, brothers and sisters, if we have been following Jesus. As his disciples, walking closely with him, this is a call that, by the grace of God, we continue to give life to the people around us. We continue to allow God to use us as, as his vessel to bring impact to people around us, just as iron sharpens iron. Brothers and sisters, in this present time of pandemic, sometimes we may wonder what is church direction. Let me reiterate again the agreed mission statement for our church is to make disciples making disciples. Basically, it's saying that. We need to commit ourselves not only to be disciples of Jesus. We commit ourselves to continue to make disciples, continue to approach other people to follow Jesus. So that as we undertake this work, we allow ourselves to keep reproducing ourselves spiritually, and. This is a very noble and glorious undertaking. So, brothers and sisters, let us continue to press on. As much as yes, many many things as a church we are not able to do because of social distancing, because of the suspension of in-person worship, etc. But God continue to open door. God continue to invite us to make. Disciples to people around us, but before we can do this, first and foremost, we need to learn to be disciples of Jesus. Disciple means that we devote ourselves, love Him, we love His Word, we seek to commune with Him. And this is the mark of disciples of Jesus. Friends, let us go to God in prayer as we commit ourselves once again unto God. Heavenly Father, on this such day, we rededicate ourselves and we pledge our lives anew unto You. We pray, Lord, receive us, and that Lord, we pray, may you continue to send your Holy Spirit to empower us, to embolden us. That Lord, we will continue to press on to more nations. For those who have yet to know Christ, we pray, Lord, your Spirit continue to guide them to know your Word, to know your love, to experience your faithfulness in their lives. For those. Who have known Christ, but for 
many reasons, for whatever reason, that they have yet to make this important decision of following Jesus. We pray, Lord, continue to strengthen their faith in you. Help them to trust you, especially in the situation that they have yet to see. Help them to know that the very cares and concern that they have, you have a way, you have your best way to deal with it. All they need to do is to surrender their situation unto you. Assure them that as much as they are sinners like us, you have come to receive them. You have come to call the unworthy to make us worthy in your eyes. For those who may have this illusion, disappointment in life that causing, it, causing them not following you any longer. I said, Lord, your Holy Spirit, continue to whisper to their ears of your grace, of your love. We pray, Lord, May the glorious invitation that Jesus spoke to his disciples about 2,000 years ago once again whisper to all our ears, Come, follow me. We give you thanks, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church, in response to the word, let us all arise as we sing our hymn of dedication, Jesus Calls Us. Today, 弟兄姐妹, 大家主理平安, 让牧师... Let us go to God in prayer. Dear God, thank you for today's worship and the message that you call us to follow you and to be your disciples. Not only to be your disciples, but to be a disciple, 
but to be disciple making disciples. May you guide us in sharing your gospel, especially to those who do not know you, to our family members, relatives, friends, colleagues, neighbors, and those we meet. May we be bold in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ to them. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us say together the, to one another the, ben, the benediction. Okay? Together, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turns his face towards you and give you peace. Thank you for following our service today. May God bless all of you. Thank you. See you next Saturday.